Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, we finally returned to working directly on our package, although we didn't do a whole lot, kind of did some housekeeping stuff, including changing the name of our package to drop that E to make it Philotype R. <laughs> um, previous to that, we did a fair amount of benchmarking to see what we could learn about how different objects are stored and manipulated within R in the most efficient manner. We looked at vectors and lists and data frames and some database options. So what I'd like to do in today's episode is return to our Philotyper code in that kmers.r script and see what we can do to perhaps overcome some of the memory limitations and speed limitations we had with our current version. You'll recall that for every sequence, we made a vector that was 65,000 units long most of those being zero, because that 65,000 was the number of possible eight MERS, right? It's 65,536, I wanna say. Yeah, give or take. Anyway, um, but most of those were zero, probably about, oh, I'd say about 64,000 of those were zero, right? So can we perhaps utilize the sparseness of the data and the benefits of using a full matrix where ultimately where we'll hopefully get is where our rows are different K MERS and our columns our different uh, genera, okay? And so we're gonna head over to our studio and we can then do use our uh, kmers, right? And this opens up our kmers script. I could also kind of use the file browser to do the same thing, but hey, you know, we've got these handy dandy uh, functions. We'll go ahead and use those. And I think I can do use test kmers to also open up our test script. The other thing I'll go ahead and open up is our vignette. And so that is actually in our benchmarking directory, and that was vignette.r. Uh, this isn't, at this point, a true vignette in our fashion. A vignette comes within our package, and it is generated, it's rendered when the package is built. I'm using vignette uh, kind of as a shorthand. I'm not sure if this will actually end up being a vignette, but perhaps it will as a way to show people how to use um, our Philotyper uh, utilities. So what I'd like to do is let's run through this and see where exactly this bombs out, because that will tell us something about where we're running into problems. So again, we can run library tidyverse, no problem. Um, we've got our uh, train set data is within train set um, directory. This is probably gonna fail. So this is actually in my benchmarking directory. So I'll do benchmarking forward slash that. And I'll also then need to add that here. So let's make sure this works. Cool, that loaded for genera as well as for fast day data, and then our sequence names, our sequences, and then our seek table is going to join our fast day and our taxonomy data together. And that way we know that our columns are all in the same order, our fasta sequences and our taxonomy data are in the same order for the same sequences. And then when we run build Kamer database, it was, it was uh, bailing out. So we know that. So let's go over to Kamers and in this build kmer database we've got sequences in general and so what i want to do is step through this function kind of line by line to see where exactly we're having problems and so sequences is going to be seek table dollar sign uh, sequence and let's do head on sequences cool that's that's definitely sequences <laughs> We also need genera, and again, sequences and genera are the arguments to this function. And so I'm basically pre-populating these values um, where we can again do seek table dollar sign taxonomy, head on genera. We get, uh, it's not exactly genera, it's the full taxonomic string. This last value here, uh, for this last one, uh, Couchioplanes. What I always tell people, say the name fast, with authority and people will trust that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's the genera value, okay? And so what we can then do is genera indices. Oh, I don't have everything loaded. So I need to go ahead and do load all on my package. And so now this should work, cool. And again, if I do genera indices, uh, we get the various indices that indicate what genus each sequence belongs to, right? So of the unique genera, what is the what is the genus number that each sequence belongs to? Uh, that makes it easier to store things as an index going into a vector than a name. We definitely saw that with our benchmarking that looking things up by an index where I say go to slot 100 
is really fast compared to say, go to, what was that one? Couchioplanes, right? Like it'd have to search for that and that's gonna take a long time, much longer than say, go to position 100 or 892 or whatever it is, right? Okay, so um, that was general indices. Let's then go to detected kmers. Uh, and I need to populate kmer size, so we'll go ahead and load that. And now let's try that detected kmers again. So this step of detect kmers across sequences is definitely where we're bonking out. Uh, again, we've got all these sequences. Let me see how many sequences we have. So if I do length on sequences, we've got 24,000. So let's say 25,000 sequences, and it's like 65,000, it's four to the eight, right? So that's 65,536, I was right before, wow. Anyway, that's a huge matrix, and most of these values, as I mentioned, are zero. And so what I'd like to do is go back and let's look at this function to see if we can't figure out how to at least get past this and ideally do this using sparse um, sparse vectors. So mar vectors that maybe only show the index values, not all the values and like a one where that kmer is present. If that doesn't make sense, hold on. Um, hopefully it will by the end of today's episode. So let's go to detect kmers across sequences and that's down here a bit. Okay, so here we've got an S apply. So we know we should change that because S apply is horribly slow. Um, and But let's kind of dig in and S apply is applying detect kmers to all of the sequences, okay? And so let's look at detect kmers, which I think I had here, right? And so this then is taking a sequence. And so to kind of test things, what I like to do is grab an example. So we could do a sequence as sequences uh, one. So sequence is that, right? And our kmer size is eight, right? Cool. And then our kmers are these words, right? Um, and actually, um, before we run it into this, we are converting our sequence into uh, base four notation, right? So we're going from ATGC to zero, one, two, three. Um, and so I maybe got a little bit ahead of myself here, right? So let's go back to sequence being this, right? So we can pipe that to seek to base four. And now if you look at sequence, we get all that, right? Good. And so then we can pass that to get all kmers. And then our kmers are these base four, eight, eight character strings. And then from this, we get our indices, right? And so then our indices are these values. And we see that we've got um, 1,430 1, uh, values, right? And so then we calculate that there are that many kmers, right? And so then we are creating a vector that's that long and we're then indicating that where these values up here are present, <laughs> we're gonna assign that a one. So what I'd like to do instead is maybe get rid of this and return indices, right? So I should do this as a test. All right, so we're here at the tests for detecting all the kmers. And again, if we kind of think through our code here, that we've got this sequence, which is base four, and then these are our kmers. Um, those are the detected kmers, right? And then our indices are those, right? Good. And so then our detected is this with detect kmers. Um, this of course generates that full 65,536 entries. You can see, I think of the first thousand, it looks like all of them are zero, right? So we're kind of doing way too much, right? So then for our test, um, I think what I'd like to do is have the length of the indices. Well, if I say length of the indices equals that, then maybe it should be length detected, um, should be the length of the indices, right? So the detected should be these indices, right? And so um, in some ways, this is kind of a silly test because this is the code for detect kmers. But anyway, we'll get there eventually. So this works, and then I don't think we need these, right? And then we have another test here where we added an N to the sequence, and we wanna be sure to get rid of that N. And so I think the test will again be um, the same as what we had up above, right? And then here again, uh, we'll have the same result. 
Uh, the difference here was that we used a K-mirror size of seven. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and test this and see if it passes. And no, it doesn't pass. We get some fails. And why do we get those fails? So uh, again, with test-driven development, we write the test or we modify the test, and then we go fix the error to get to passing, right? So let's see, this is line 142 that it's failing on, and that's down here. And this is outside of the tests that I was actually looking at. I'm going to go ahead and comment out all of the steps that come after detecting all of the k-mers because um, I wanna kind of go through things in a stepwise progression. All right, so we'll retest it. Those tests all pass, right? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this code to kind of clean things up a bit. Again, that test is a little bit, I don't wanna say silly, but um, the test is basically running these two lines and hoping that we get the same output that we had up above here. So it's not too surprising. So the next thing I wanna look at is detect k-mers across sequences. Yep, so here we are. I'll go ahead and uncomment this, save it, and then we'll go ahead and test. This fails, right? And so what we can see is at line 142 of our test k-mers, and that was this one here. Um, and so I wanna make sure that the, the test result is what we want, given that we're now doing things in a sparse framework, right? So instead of storing things as a matrix, where again, we're gonna have to store all those zeros, I think I'd rather store things as a list. And so each sequence will get a different slot in the list. And then for each sequence, we'll have the vector of k-mers that were present, right? So I'll say vector mode equals uh, list and then length equals two, right? And so this gets us two slots as a vector and I'll call this expected. And uh, so that's good. And we're gonna ultimately comment this out because we don't need it. And then what we're gonna want is expected sequence one and expected sequence two. And so let's say, so we'll uh, do double brackets for one and double brackets for two, right? And so I think we're gonna be pretty close here, right? And so we're gonna have inside of this, we'll have get all k-mers from sequence one at k-mer size, and we're then gonna convert that to base four. So I think this might actually pass like this. So let's let's see, go ahead and test it. That fails, <laughs> all right? So the actual we find is a double vector, whereas the expected is a list. So we need to go into kmers.r and convert this into a list, right? And so here we had s apply, we could always go to L apply on this and then we'd get rid of use name. So I'll save that and test it. That passes, but we learned in our benchmarking that the apply functions are actually quite slow. And so what I'd rather do is kind of like what we did in the test to pre-create a list and then fill it with a for loop. We actually saw in our benchmarking that that was a lot faster than L apply or S apply. So again, we need to get the length so that we know uh, how big of a vector to pre-create. So we'll do n sequences as length on sequences, right? Then we'll do kmer list as a vector of mode uh, equals list, and then our length equals n sequences. And so this then, oh, I didn't define n sequences here, so we'll do that in there. And then kmer list, should be really long, right? So it's gonna be over 24,000, almost 25,000 entries, right? And so we'll do four i in one to n sequences. So there's a, one thing I haven't done in the past that I'll do here is use a function called seek underscore along. So seek along will make sure that this vector of values behaves properly. Uh, if n sequences would say zero or negative, then we would get a really weird result whereas seek along will make sure that it's always going in a positive direction. Um, so here we'll go ahead and then say kmer list with our double brackets and i, and then I will take the values here um, and pop that in there. So we'll do detect kmers, and we'll then give this as our argument sequences uh, i, right? So we can go ahead and remove this l apply function, and then we need to re return Kmer list. So I'm going to save and test. That passed. 
Very good. We're through the next test. That's wonderful. So the next test is to uh, calculate the word specific priors. I'll go ahead and uncomment that again. Let's go ahead and save and test. And what we're finding is that sure enough at line 158, um, it is complaining uh, because dim x must have a positive sign here in um, detect matrix, right? However, I think if we look at these values, when we run detect kmers across sequences, that this is going to come up as a, a list, right? And so this shouldn't perhaps be detect matrix, but detect list. Go ahead and load that, right? And so then if we come down here, our expected was a table, or a, I guess ultimately it was a vector, right? Of expected values where we are given a matrix where again, our rows were our kmers and our columns were our sequences, and we were summing across those kmers. We were summing across the sequences within a kmer and adding 0.5 and then dividing by the number of sequences plus one. So we don't have that anymore because we don't have detect matrix. We have these values up here on lines 153 to 156 instead. So we'll use that. And then we're gonna take detect list and throw that into calc word specific priors. And then we're going to expect that our output priors here are going to equal these values that we had over here. And this first test I have here on line 160, I'm gonna get rid of because we're already testing basically the four different conditions that we expect to find in our priors vector. So I'll go ahead and remove that and save, and let's test it and see what happens. Good, it's still failing. We're using the apply function on a matrix, but let's change that to be a list. So we'll take that, and I, I know this is going to change that this code isn't right, but let's go ahead and put detect list in there already because otherwise I'll forget to change it and we'll still have detect matrix. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out, and we're gonna need the number of sequences, right? So this here was the number of sequences. So we'll do n seeks as length on detect list, right? And so then what we'll do is we'll take detect list and we're going to unlist it, right? So we'll do unlist, right? And so if this was, if our detect list is this, right? And I do unlist on detect list, that then gives me a vector, right? And just to kind of show that, right? So normally what I would do would be to pipe this into table, right? And if we look at that, then what we get is a special type of output. And again, this is a table format where the values are down here. These are the number of times each kmer has been seen, and these are the kmer indices. Um, a function that I've recently learned that is actually a lot faster than this would be tabulate. So we'll do tabulate on that. And this then um, gives us a vector uh, from zero to the largest value. So that would be 58 in this case, right? If we look at the help for tabulate, we see that we can actually give it the number of bins that we have, right? And so in here, I could say bin equals underscore for the data coming through. And then I could do n bins equals, and that's going to be four to the number of kmers but I don't have the number of kmers here in my function, right? And so this is then gonna be n kmers. And so what I'll do then is have n kmers equals four to the kmer length, right? And so now I need to pass in the kmer length. So we've got that. And so then our word specific priors going into here um, will be uh, kmer size. And I think I've been using kmer size rather than kmer length throughout this whole project. So I'll probably stick with that instead of kmer length. So the kmer size, kmer size, and kmers, good. And so now if we do all this, we now see that we've got zeros going past the three to position 65, right? And so then this is our uh, vector of counts. So what we can do then is call this priors, right? And then, but priors, needs to have 0.5 added to the numerator. So we'll do plus 0 0.5. And so we see here, some of these values in the middle aren't 0.5, right? They're like the count plus 0.5. And so then we'll go ahead and wrap that in parentheses and then divide by the number of sequences and seeks plus one. And so that, and that gets us these values. And so 
Um, in some ways, it helps readability to predefine NSeqs and KMERS up on their own, but we only use these variables once in our function. And so it's a little inefficient in, I don't know, overly complicated to define extra variables that you only use once. So I'm going to go ahead and inline these values. So I'll take that definition for uh, n kmers and plop that in for n bins. And then we'll do the same thing for n seeks. Go ahead and save, remove some of this white space. I don't need a return statement here because this is the last calculated value for the function. So I'll go ahead and save and test. And that passes without any errors, wonderful. So why don't we create a test to compare tabulate and table to see how they compare in terms of speed. So I'll do a sample from one to 10. Uh, and if we do that, then we basically get one through 10 in random order, right? But if I do like n equals 50, it's gonna complain because it's not n, it's size, but it's still gonna complain because if you have, if you're drawing from a vector um, that's smaller than the number of things you're trying to draw, it wants to do it with replacement. So we'll do replace equals true. All right, so that gets us a, a set of values. I'm gonna go ahead and add 20 to all these values and I'll do set.seed uh, 19760620 uh, to set the seed. And so this will be our, we'll say our fake <laughs> kmers, right? And um, we'll say that there's n kmers of 64, okay? All right, so um, if we have fake kmers and we wanna do a table on those, then we get this table back, right? Where the names are our uh, kmer values and the values down here are the actual values, right? And so I could then say like, this is a kmer table, right? And then I could do kmer values and that will be then like names on kmer table and go ahead and run these. And then we see these are our kmer values, but you see quotes around them, right? Uh, and that's because it's using these names as character types. So I'll go ahead and convert this to as.numeric. And so now if we look at kmer values, we now see that we have those as numbers. Uh, and then I guess these are, yeah, those are kmer values and then kmer counts. We'll then do as.numeric on kmer table. So you can already see that there's a few steps going on here to get what we want. And so these then are those counts, right? I'll do kmer vector, and we'll then say that this is a numeric um, of length n kmers, right? And then we'll do kmer vector with kmer values, right? We're index into those kmer values are gonna be kmer counts, okay? And so why aren't you happy? Make sure I've got that loaded. Cool. And so now if we do kmer vector, we now get those values and we can see the values here, right? So ah, that's a bit exhausting, right? So we could imagine creating a function for this. And so we'll do uh, k table function on that. And we'll go ahead and tab that over, right? And then, yep, okay. And then we could imagine doing it also with a tabulate function. And so we could do tabulate fake kmers, right? And so we get those values, but of course, it lops off here at 30, right? But then we need to say n bins equals n kmers, right? And that gets what we want. And that's basically, that is actually, not basically, it is the same thing that we have up here for kmer vector. And so we'll do k tabulate function on that and that. Cool. And so I'll go ahead and load these two functions and then we'll do micro benchmark. Uh, on micro benchmark, I didn't load the library, but um, maybe I'll do that up up top here. So I'll do library a micro benchmark. Make sure that's loaded. Uh, micro benchmark with k table, k tabulate, uh, and make those function calls. Give that a run. So it's saying less accurate nanosecond times to avoid potential integer overflows. Uh, I'm not certainly worried about that, but what we see is that tabulate is. Uh, probably like 40 times faster on median than using a table function. And part of that is because of all this rigmarole we have to do to get things into the right format. But the other thing is that table 
is effectively treating each of our integers as a string. And so you can, I think of it as creating a list uh, where each value in the list, or each name in the list, corresponds to each of the values that I had between 20 and 30, right? Um, and so then it's basically indexing the value of that list. And so it's always looking for a character string corresponding to the value of fake kmers. And then it's incrementing it one, one at a time, right? And so because it's treating my fake kmer values as strings rather than integers, it's going a lot slower. And I kind of have that intuition again based on the benchmarking that we've done in those previous episodes. Where again, tabulate is using fake kmers and it's taking it in either as an integer or as a, as a factor. And a factor is an integer with special names put onto those integers, but it's working on the integer values, right? And so basically we, we see that it's effectively using the index values from fake kmers to index to increment the value of that vector, which is no doubt why it's so much faster. All right, and so now we'll come down to the next test. So calculating the genus specific conditional probabilities and so I'll go ahead and uncomment that test. And maybe we'll go ahead and uh, save and test it. I know it's gonna fail, sure enough. No one gets it right on their first try. Oh, I, I love that it's so empathetic with me, <laughs> all right? And so one of the problems is that our calc word specific priors is missing the argument kmer size, right? And so that was here on line 175. So here I'll go ahead and put in kmer size also, I'm calling this detect matrix. This should be detect list, and we'll pass that into here. Um, and yeah, I put detect matrix should be detect list there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and see what happens. I'm not sure exactly if it's gonna bonk on us. Sure enough, it bonked on us. <laughs> go ahead to that to that function right here. So this argument needs to be detect list, right? And so we'll go ahead and copy that. Uh, to wherever we have detect matrix down below. And that looks good. So here in my comment, I have the formula for calculating the genus conditional probabilities. MWI is the number of sequences in a genus that have a particular kmer plus the overall prior that we just calculated for that kmer divided by the number of sequences in that genus plus one, right? So it's, it's similar but different. And so we need to know the number of sequences in each genus, right? And that's gonna be for that M value. And so you'll see here on line 114, what I was just talking about with the table function, right? That I would do table, genera, and then convert that to a vector. But I can also use tabulate instead uh, to get the number of times each genus shows up. And so tabulate will only work on integer values or on factors, it won't work on strings. And so I already have this reminder to myself that genera needs to be an integer, not a character. So that's cool. And so um, this all should work. Uh, we then get down to genus count, where we are trying to count in the rows, the detect list. So this was like the detect matrix. So this was the number of rows in the detect matrix. This is the number of kmers, right? And then the columns is the number of genera. So we're trying to make a matrix in genus count where the rows are the number of kmers or the kmer values and the columns are the different genera, right? And so what we need then are um, a indication of uh, the number of kmers and we can get that actually from our word specific priors. So we could go ahead and we could do like n kmers as length on word specific priors, right? And then kmers could here for the number of rows, right? And so that's gonna be zero. And so now we have genus count, where we're going to have, um, again, we're instead of working with a matrix for our detect matrix, we're gonna be working with a detect list, which I have here, right? And then we're gonna be going into that sequences genus. So we're going into the genera column, right? And that we're gonna have detect list, which is really, um, a list, right? And so let's get our syntax a little bit better than what we currently have it, right? So detect list here is a vector of kmers that are found in a sequence, and we know what genus that goes to, right? And so what we could really do is we could take detect list, and that's gonna have the kmer values, and then that's going to, 
this is going to be the rows that we want to update and the genus we want to update, right? And so we can then take that really and put on the right side and we're basically going to add one to that, okay? So I think that should work. So again, we're in incrementing the rows that correspond to detected KMERS for that sequence in that genus, okay? Um, and then we're going to index over all of the sequences to update all of uh, the genera. And I think that should work. So let's go ahead and save and test. Wonderful. They all passed. What do you know? Again, I think this is the beauty of test-driven design is that we have kind of the truth here. Uh, and so we can write the test, have it fail, go to our code and get it to work. And then we can refactor our code and make sure that that code still works. Okay. So we're going to go down now. Uh, to our next test. And the next test in order here is create the KMER database from the sequences, taxonomy, and KMER size. But I also have one down here that's convert back and forth between genus names and indices. I'm going to go ahead and move that up ahead of this one for the KMER database because the KMER database is really kind of like the whole shebang, if you will. So let's go ahead and save and test. I don't know if that's going to, yeah, that passed, you know, perfectly. Now I'm going to uncomment our final test save it and test and see what happens. Yes, it fails. All right, so error in calc word specific priors, argument camera size is missing. Great, so we know. <laughs> so we'll go over here. And so that was our first function. We moved that up to the very top here, right? Uh, so that's here on line 25. So we need to go ahead and add camera size, go ahead and save and test and see what happens. And that passed. What do you know? See, refactoring is so much easier with these tests. So I feel pretty good that we have overcome some of the big problems that we had in build KMER database, right? And I think the problem we had, of course, was right here, where we had like the 25,000 sequences with six a vector of 65,000 values of zeros and ones, right? Whereas really all we needed to store were the index values. And we found actually in our benchmarking that by using those index values, we could get actually faster access to the vector than copying over the entire vector of say trues and falses, which is basically what we have with zeros and ones. Okay, so I'm gonna to return to my vignette and go ahead and run it again to see if we can get past that step now that we've hopefully made it a little bit more efficient. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and load the, the functions and then get genera and FASTA sequence names, sequences, um, seek table, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go stepwise through build KMER database. So we'll do sequences on that, genera being this, right? And then KMER size uh, of eight, cool. And then we'll come back to our code. So genera indices uh, goes fine, of course. And then this next step is where uh, we ran into problems before. So hopefully by making our code a bit more efficient by using only the index values where the KMERS are present will solve our problems. So uh, we'll see how long this takes and whether or not my computer uh, starts on fire again. Very good, that ran through without a problem. I'm just really happy about that. Um, let's see if the next steps work. So the next would be priors. Uh, that is un upset about KMER size. Um, let's see, calc word specific priors. Um, that KMER size. It's saying it's, it's saying that KMER size is unused. Um, and I'm wondering why it's doing that. And again, if I load the function, does that work? So it's loading it. I want to see if I look at calc word specific priors, uh, what it includes. Um, so for some reason, it doesn't have the full KMER size. And I wonder why it's not loading it. And I wonder if it's not loading it because um, I need to highlight and load everything. The function definition wasn't getting loaded for some reason. All right, so then the conditional probabilities, that took a, a second or two, the genera names, and then it returns this list, right? And so this then uh, might actually be too big <laughs> to show, um, but we get, yeah, so we get our top thousand uh, genera, uh, and then also I think up ahead, we perhaps saw a table of the conditional probabilities. Again, the rows being the probability for the KMER and the columns being the probability of each of our, uh, it looks like it's gonna be 
3,883 entries. It shows the first thousand and then the next, right? So we're gonna have 65,536 kamers and 3,883 entries as columns. So that's pretty slick that we actually can store it as a full matrix. So one other thing stood out to me as I looked at this, uh, as it was running, and I see that I've got at least one apply function in here still. And I think that's it, right? So we've got, for this get all kamers, we were basically stepping across the entire sequence, right? And we're doing S apply, getting a kamer from each chunk of the sequence for an individual sequence. So let's go ahead and convert this to a for loop because that should make things a bit faster, right? So we're gonna make a vector of character types. So we'll do vector character and the length will be n kamers, right? So that'll be a bunch of quotes, right? I'm not sure exactly where it's taking uh, n kamers from, but whatever. Um, so we'll go ahead with that, and that will then be our seek kamers, right? Gonna go ahead and comment out that s apply, and then we'll do, f just so it's there to see, but it's not too distracting. So we'll do for i in one colon n kamers, and we'll also do that seek along that I mentioned before, right? And now what we're gonna do is index into seek kamers, right? And so again, what we found in a lot of that uh, benchmarking is that if we predefine a vector and then fill it, it's gonna be much better than growing it and much better than s apply. We'll then do get kamer and we'll apply that to, so it's gonna take sequence as our x, so we'll then do uh, get kamer on yeah, sequence equals x, kamer size equals kamer size. And then we had get kamer. Uh, so we had a start position, right? And so we'll say start equals i on that. So that should be good. So we'll go ahead and save and test, of course. And that bombed. So that's worrisome. <laughs> Uh, why did you bomb? Um, oh, I had seek kamer, seek kamers. S. Okay. So let's go ahead and test again. That's still bombed. So let's start at the top and see what we did wrong. Uh, so actual is null, expected is a character vector. And I'm thinking I didn't return it. <laughs> right. So I need to return seek kamers. Right. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and save and test. So, all right. What am I doing wrong now? Ah, so what I did wrong now <laughs> was that I'm I'm saving this as seek kamers. So I'm basically writing over seek kamers over and over. When up here, I define seek kamers as a vector. So I need to index into seek kamers. <sighs> All right, you should yell a lot louder at me, won't you? Now everything passes and everything looks good. I'll go ahead and remove that s apply, and we're in good shape. One thing that I think will come back to in the next episode is the issue of uh, how we're working with strings. Because we have a lot of string manipulation going on in this uh, set of functions. We see here, where we do get all kamers, that we are basically stepping through a sequence to get all possible kamers, right? And we're using the substring function here, which is also um, a string-based operation, right? And so I'm not totally convinced that our string-based operations are as efficient as they could be. Um, these are from base R, and I know that there's some other tools that have been created for working with strings that might be a little bit faster. So in the next episode, I wanna revisit this code and see if we can't find faster ways of working with strings to deal with things like substring here, uh, to upper, to lower, uh, G sub here, char TR here, right? There's a variety of string-based things that we're doing that maybe we can make this even faster than we already have uh, by swapping out some perhaps improved methods. But to do that, we have to do the benchmarking to figure out which method is the most efficient. So that you don't miss that exciting episode, please make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.